Today, we're talking about one thing, black women and interracial dating. Get ready, this one's gonna be spicy. I'm Marley Hall. I've spent my entire career asking questions and getting the answers that inspire, inform, and entertain. Now I get to focus on what matters to our community and lead the conversations we have when we're the only ones in the room. So I have a few friends here to help me break it all down. Publicist and entrepreneur, Tequila White, licensed therapist and host, Estia Brown, and writer and podcast host, Nicole Perkins. All right, so let's get right to it. Well, we have the rapper Eve, and Serena Williams, they are among a growing number of black women who have married white men. Some people call it swirling, and it made headlines recently <laughs> when a co-host on The Real said this. And this is why I'm so emotional about it, because so many of our sisters are so lonely, yeah. Yeah. and they don't want to admit it, and all they got to do is just take a chance. It's so because we don't have the love that we yeah. need, and you need to go out and find it. that one person. Yeah, there's a lot of that. You feel good. Yes. That one person that you can turn to when you have a bad day, mm -hmm. and you don't have to turn to your girlfriends or your mama or somebody. You turn to that one person, he understands and looks in your eye. Yeah. That's the one you keep, and I don't care what color he is. Mm, well, I'll be honest, I got a little emotional when I saw that. I'm sure women of all races can relate to feeling lonely at some point in their lives, but black women especially have a unique set of challenges when it comes to meeting, dating, and marrying. So, Tia, you're the relationship expert. <laughs> Why is it so hard out here for the sisters? Well, we're dealing with a couple of issues that other communities just aren't dealing with. Number one, because of the history in this country with racial disparities, economic disparities, we have a high incarceration rate of African-American men. So studies have shown that the rate of black men in the age group of about 25 to 54 in comparison to black women is actually 83 to 100. So for every 100 black women, there are only 83 men, right? right. So we and outnumber them. Seriously. So we're outnumbering them. We also know the statistics around black women getting higher um, education rates and things like that. So there are a lot of things that make the, it not an equal playing field. So we have that issue. But then we also have the other side of that coin is like what was going on at home when you have dads who aren't there? So what happens? You have a lot of the super moms. And super moms are great. We love them. We support them. But unfortunately, a lot of times that creates a different depiction of what uh, womanhood should be mm. like for an African-American woman, right? So you see little girls growing up without men in the household and black boys growing up thinking what? That women do it all and black women are workhorses. Right. And it sounds so harsh to say, mm -hmm. but these dynamics impact how we feel. Right, and that all black women are like their mom. All black women are like their mom. You know, <laughs> another thing that we don't talk about too is that we, we, you know, black women have gone through so much trauma that we often loud them, but we don't talk about the trauma that they pass on because of their hurt. So a lot of black men or black boys grow up having very trying relationships with their mother. So how does that impact when you're ready to get into the dating world? How you see black women, how you treat black women, who makes you feel loved, who you think is special. So all of these things are on the laps a single black woman looking for a good man. So that's why you see yeah. someone like Lonnie Love who's in a normal life phase thing, right? Like, so when you are in your 20s, you might want to build, but most women, by most people by their 30s or 40s, you want to build with a partner. And when it's hard to find a partner because there are real issues of a dis like disparities in numbers, who's eligible, who's ready, you're sad. Mm. You know, so her loneliness, her tears are definitely real and felt by a lot of women. And, and you know, it's a, it's a trying situation for women who are hyper-focused on only dating black men. Right. So, Tequila, I know that you are not with it. No. And so <laughs> not you enough. heard that, that video from The Real. Okay. You, all the statistics from Dr. Tia yeah. here. So why aren't you with it? I just feel like there is no comparison. Like, there is nothing that you can tell me that anyone else can bring to the table that can compare to what black men provide. Mm. And it's just that safety that you feel, not having to explain nuances, not having to explain why you may react to things a certain way. You just can be, and they get it, and they feel you, and it's that unspoken bond that you can't create with other races. Like, it's just not there. Like. Well, I'm sure black men everywhere are applauding as you say that. <laughs> <laughs> but have you ever tried dating a white man? No. I haven't tried not, not curious. to. I haven't tried not to. I haven't like had someone approach me and me say, no, you're not black, so I'm not going to talk to you. But I haven't actively gone out and searched for it. I just, 
not I interested. Feel, no, I just feel like even in the conversation, like I can feel my mind drifting away. Like I'm not engaged. I'm not feeling that that bond, that connection, that there's just certain swag and flavor that black men just have that is just there's no way to duplicate it. There's mm. no way to replicate it. But Nicole, you are feeling that connection because I know that for the last five years you've dated almost exclusively white men. Yeah, and that's not on purpose. It's just how it ended up happening. I dated black men almost exclusively in my youth up until maybe 30, 33, something like that. Um, but I don't have a problem dating whoever's going to uh, take care of me, whoever's going to treat me well, whoever treats the people around me well, whoever is a good person. I'm just like... I try to be open and open-minded about who I can have in my life. And I don't want to limit myself that way um, because I think good people are good people. Mm -hmm. yeah. So did the statistics have anything to do with that, the social climate in terms of black women dating? Yes, I'm from Nashville, which is a very white town. <laughs> and uh, when I started online dating, the people who were matching with me were mostly white men. And I will say, to be you know, honest, to give full disclosure, a lot of them were coming at me with some racist, fetish, fetishizing bullshit. Mm. And of course, I eliminated all of that. Um, I did not, you know, for the most part, entertain any of that. Um, a lot of them were coming at me with some kind of like, do you dominate? Can you dominate me kind of thing wow. in the bedroom? Maybe. Yeah, Maybe. you know, they wanted... They wanted uh, me to like beat them up and and like oh step on them and shit like that. And then finally, I was like, okay, well, let me see. <laughs> you know, I was like, so you started beating them up a little bit. Yes, <laughs> yes, I like, I, I, yes, I, I let somebody be my sub, my submissive, the person that I like kept on his knees all the time, and I like that. And so, I, being that helped discover, helped me discover a part of myself that I. I kind of knew about, but wasn't allowed to explore in my relationships with black men because, of course, they're into like, I'm, they were into like tying me up. But when I was like, okay, well, let me tie you up, they were like, no, we're not doing that. Well, why not? Like, if I if I'm supposed to trust you with that kind of thing, why can't you trust me? Mm. So there's a lot of that. Like, it's not just the sex, but it's also like this. Um, performance of masculinity that, that comes into play sometimes when I'm talking about just strictly like a sexual relationship, a casual relationship between like, um, you know, white men and versus black men. So that's part of also why I, I seem to kind of gravitate more towards white men in the last few years, even though I'm, I, I do miss the swag of black men. I miss <laughs> the smell. Like they're really, <laughs> that's terrible, right? But there I is like a little, a little bit. <laughs> But there's like a smell and there is something about not having to explain certain things or whatever or not having to like just let go of certain things. So I do understand that I'm not saying that that's not important, but there are other things that I think that sometimes I just kind of am like, well, you know what? I just I just want to do the eat me out and Ooh. that's what I want. You know? <laughs> I think it's okay, hard because you that bomb. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> because some, when we talk about black and white men, we, we, we talk a lot about stereotypes, you know, mm. and, and swagger and being submissive. But it's so hard just to find someone that you're compatible with overall, regardless of race. And I think that's really what Lonnie was speaking to. Like, right. I want to be loved. I want to be loved by someone. And the biggest thing she was saying about James is that he gets me. And there is, I think, a, a more of a focus in, for women specifically to date black men because... You know, unfortunately, one of the good stereotypes and bad stereotypes is that they are swagger. They are more masculine. You know, they make us feel strong and protected. And, you know, it's just challenging because there are black men who come in. There are black men who would be your sub. Yes. You know, there are yes. black men who don't have swagger. Yes. You know, but the challenge for us at black, as black women in general is because of so many different variables, including how black women are perceived by mass, you know, mass culture or culture at large, yeah. you know, uh, sexually. You know, and, and, and as someone to protect and love and value, just finding a mate in general, it's challenging. So when you add the layer of, I, I only want this kind of guy, you know, and he has to have this kind of swag. So not only are you looking for just a black man, you're looking for a special kind of black man. It's a challenge. So you're on board with black women expanding their options and considering other races. I think that it's important for you to definitely expand um, your options, but you have to be honest with yourself. Like, you know, personally, you have to figure out who you're attracted to, but what are the core values that will make a relationship work? 
right? Mm -hmm. So you can't just say, okay, go date white men or Asian men or Latino men because, you know, there's this disparity in the numbers. Can I have a functioning, healthy relationship with a man of another ethnicity? But also, what am I looking for in my partners? Because, you know, there are available black men, but a lot of times we are focused on the wrong things about eligibility. So, you know, so it has to be a balance of all of those things. So speaking of available black men who are educated, who have not been incarcerated, who are suitable matches for us, are, are there just enough of them around? Well, I think the numbers would say no, right? Because if we look at even like the numbers in terms of going to college, they'll say that there's a huge disparity. Black women are killing it there. But the reality is when we're picking, we don't actually have to pick so concretely. Because a man has not gone to college, that doesn't mean that he doesn't have a viable career. Uh, just because a man has been incarcerated doesn't mean that he's dead to the world. And I'm not saying you have to go, you know, marry. What do they, they have those shows like married <laughs> out of jail? But there are people, you, we know that our men are unfairly incarcerated. So sometimes someone might have a record and it's like okay well what did you really do you know and and is it something that prohibits you from being a healthy partner but mm -hmm. the reality is we do have to think differently to to effectively hunt because we are at a disadvantage statistically you know and, and it sounds unfair but that's just our fact so now what mm. but nicole have you encountered any challenges dating a white man and just going out and about in the world besides getting tied up <laughs> <laughs> besides, I mean, she like that she like that <laughs> I mean, of course, um, they say racist things. They are clearly not interested in me as a person. They're interested in me because I'm black. All and of them? Not all of them, but there are, those are those the, are the kind, challenges that you Yeah, have. like if it's, um, I guess I should say for people who approach me, not necessarily the people that I date. The people mm -hmm. that I end up dating, um, the challenges are, you know, sometimes I'll come home and I'm trying to explain my day and I'm trying to explain a microaggression, you know, that somebody like did something to me at work that was clearly because I was black and they were white. And, you know, he might say, oh, I'm sure that's not the case. Mm -hmm. I know a black man would be like, what you need me to do? You know, like, you know, like he would be, he would be ready to go. But a white man is trying to like, tell me, no, that's just in my imagination sometimes. And then other times, you know, there are like the, the woke white guys who are just really like, you know, they want to get, try to get academic with it and whatever. And it's just like, I just need you to listen. So either way, there's, you know, there's a little bit of like, just listen to me when I'm venting. You don't necessarily have to solve anything, that kind of thing. Um, but is dealing with all of that worth it? I mean, it passes the time, yes. And I, I mean, <laughs> wow. I mean that's, that sounds so unfulfilling. No. And, Whoa. But I'm sure you're looking for more than that. It depends. Like, sometimes I am and sometimes I'm not. Sometimes I am looking for a relationship, and that is sad. And, you know, when I'm like, okay, who's going to give me some attention? There are definitely times where I'm just like, I just need some, you know, a guy to talk to or whatever. But then there are times when I'm like, no, I just need somebody to, like, come over and then leave and that's <laughs> fine and I think that's the problem that I've been having as I've gotten older where um, you know men sometimes don't understand that women aren't all looking for a relationship they're not always trying to get to the altar they're just trying to get you at their personal altar maybe and that's it and just go and it's uh it's the men who don't seem to understand that they need to customize their approach they need to customize their game they always just want to like have the same result that causes me problems or stress. And to mm. that point, I think women can think, uh, you know, a little bit differently in terms of, you know, identifying their hierarchy of needs, mm -hmm. right? It's like, so if you want to date casually, you know, what are you looking for? If you're trying to date seriously, what are you looking for? And really kind of itemizing the core values that are important. And of course, aesthetics are important too, because you want to be attracted to your mate. Right. But if you are super focused on being married or having a, a long-standing healthy relationship outside of marriage, mm -hmm. you have to think about What's in my available pool? Right. Absolutely. Right. Well, for women who, black women who are interested in dating white men, mm -hmm. where do you find them? How do you go about it? Where do you start? Okay, well, I <laughs> am a bit of an introvert, so I kind of rely mostly on online dating. It's easy for me. Um, working in the media, it's hard for me to find men who date women, who are interested in women, I guess I could say that. Um, and it's hard finding, at my age, men who are not already attached. So my pool is particularly small at this point in my life. So I just go online or... Um, since I've moved to New York, I've been here about three years. Every now and then I'll, you know, go out to a bar and do that kind of thing to, you know, find somebody. I'm not great at that because I have 
terrible. I'm not good at flirting because I'm so direct, in case you haven't noticed. But <laughs> I'm too direct. And a lot of times men, regardless of race, they want the chase. And I'm just like, no, I like you. You like me. Let's do this. And they don't want that. They want to, like, do the whole hunting thing. And I don't have time for that. Like, let's just get to it. Um, so for me, I tend to rely on online dating and occasionally the bar scene. Mm. Well, speaking of online dating, I'm sure you know about this infamous OkCupid survey that came out in 2014 oh, yes. um, that said that black women were rated the least attractive of all the women on the site. Yes. Do you feel that when you're online dating? Sometimes. There are definitely times where I'm like, this is dry, I'm not getting any matches, and I will uh, delete my account for a couple of months and then come back refreshed or reset or something like that. I definitely feel... Um, again, that sometimes men are just talking to me because they see brown skin if it's somebody who is not black. Um, I think that the black men who um, that I do match with, they are overly familiar. They are very presumptuous in how they talk to me. And they, um, they you know, in the same way that you're kind of like... Uh, you know, when you go to a black business and you're like, come on, I know you can hook me up. Why don't you give this, <laughs> give me an extra discount? I feel like a lot of times black men are approaching me in that same way, online anyway, where they're just kind of like, we're both black, let's do this. And I'm like, okay, well, can you like try to figure out how to spell my name at least? You know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so I've definitely felt uh, So do you feel like black, black men mm -hmm. don't try as hard? Online dating, yes. Mm. Yes, I will say that. I will say that. that. That's an interesting statistic. So what do you think about that? Do you think that black men need to step it up? Um, I don't feel like, I feel like men in general, period, need to do better. Um, because I think on one hand, I understand that they are outnumbered, so they have more options. So that, uh, that ex like if right, I had a whole bunch of people, the then it's like, <laughs> of course I wouldn't really care that much because I'm like, well, if you don't want me, I got other options. So I understand that part, but I just feel that a lot of women are now settling. So they're mm -hmm. making it harder for us because if you take any old thing, then the person after, they're going to feel like they can yeah. do the same thing to me because that they did to you because you were just yeah. like, well, I'm lonely. Well, my pool is small. Well, you're making excuses. Yeah. So you're just letting them call you whenever they want, not reply, cancel dates last minute, do whatever they feel like doing. And then when you get tired of it and they come to me, they think they can do that to me and it's not happening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I just, I don't think it's a black man, white man. I think just... People overall need to treat people how they want to be treated. Yeah, I think it's a challenge because you really have to understand the black man's beautiful plight, right? The educated mm. black man's beautiful plight right now. Like, the bar has been set uh, uh, lower, quite frankly, because they have so many options right. in terms of... So how they can treat people and what they can get away with and what people will forgive is very different. So when dating, we have to remember there's so many variables, right? Like, what phase is he in in life? Mm -hmm. The fact that men aren't always looking to settle down the way women are, just in general. You know, it becomes a conscious effort much later in their lives. And, and then when they want to, they can be extremely fickle on what the criteria is, right? So you have people, you know, um, online dating because you have access to so many people. If someone upsets you or if there's a miscommunication, what do you do? You unmatch, you move on. In real life, you, you wouldn't do them. that, right? Yeah. You ghost them, right? Yeah. So, so we have to be understanding that this is how they're operating. And I totally agree with you, Tequila. I think it creates a challenge for women who are dating seriously and who don't want to settle and figuring out how do we now strategize to make sure that we are mindful of saying, like, if I want to be in a, a specific kind of relationship, I have to set up rituals of how we're going to treat ourselves earlier on. And they might not adhere to these rituals because they don't have to, because they don't have to. And it doesn't mean that they're necessarily all bad guys. Or that but they it's like, are a bad guy themselves. Right. It's because, mm. you know, when you're when you're allowed to play, if I can play in the pool and, you know, there's no time that you have to get out, why am I getting out at 10 o'clock, right? If I mm. can play until 1 a.m. So I think that that's the biggest challenge for the community now. Because if you talk to most guys who are, you know, over 30, they'll say they want to be in a, a relationship. You know, they want a certain kind of woman. But in terms of the practicalities of having the tools and the focus mm. to understand mm. how to strategically date, it's very hard because, you know, they're thinking with all kinds of heads, right? Mm -hmm. And it's a lot, it's very tempting to have so many women uh, coming at you or just available. Right. But yeah. why is it that black men are so much more open to dating outside their so, race? So let's look at how we're socialized overall, right? So there is a hierarchy in terms of beauty. And when we look at that, 
who's at the top? You always see blonde, blue hair, you know, uh, what is it, blue eye, blonde hair at the top. That's Those are the images, regardless of what's in your household, mm -hmm. you can have the most pro-black household, unless you are living, you know, someplace with no television, no radio, you're not going to see that. Mm. So we know that men in general are more visually stimulated. So when they're in their play phase, they'll date different types of women, right? But because we of, of systemic racism, let's just call it what it is, our men have been taught through many for many way many reasons rather that we aren't at the top of the food chain. So not only are we not at the top of the food chain in beauty, we're also not in the top of the food chain in terms of femininity. And why is that? We go back to that other statistic we talked about, men being out of the household and mom having to perform masculine duties, right? So if it's not mom, it could be auntie, it could be grandma. So now we're not looking at our women as the most beautiful or the person that needs to be doted on. And then what do the women do? Because you have to survive, you're what? You're strong. So that cape means I'm doing things that normally uh, uh, my feminine side does, isn't tapped into, and it makes it, you know, it's, it's just a cycle. And we yes. know, we talk about this all it the time, but the we black don't think stereotype. about how, how it affects the actual dating in the mm -hmm. world. So when I'm going out as a girl who had single women around me, I'm thinking in a more masculine way. As a boy who had single women around me, I'm thinking that black women don't need me. Black mm -hmm. women don't we continuously say we don't need you. But right. we do, though. But we do. Yeah. But we need we do. you. We want you. We want to help you. We want to be helped by you. I need to be saved by you. And it's so hard for women to say those things. Right. Well, here's a fact that many of us probably already know. According to the Pew Research Center, black men are twice as likely to marry outside their race than black women. So clearly, the brothers are not afraid to swirl. So coming up, there are still so many misconceptions around interracial dating. It's time to play fact or fiction after the break. So we're talking black women looking for love outside their race, and I want to break down some of the myths and misconceptions about interracial dating. But first, my girls are here to help me, of course. Tequila White, public relations maven, and S. Tia Brown, licensed therapist and host, and Nicole Perkins, writer and podcast host. Okay, so myth number one, black women who date outside their race are just bitter over failed relationships with black men. Oh no. That's fiction. That's slander. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, no. That is insulting. No. Um, why do you feel so strongly about that? I just feel that who you choose to date should not be a last resort. It shouldn't be like, well, I'm dating them because no one else wants me. And that's kind of the feel that I got from Lolly's, Lolly's clip. It was kind of like, I tried, and then I got older, and I was lonely, and then I saw him, and he saved the day. And it's kind of like, hmm. no. Like, hmm. who you date should be a reflection of your values. It should be a reflection of what you want. It shouldn't be, well, I guess this is it. Because, like, You think who, she's settled? I don't know her situation. I'm just saying that... For, for the question, it doesn't mean that you're bitter. It doesn't mean that you've lost all hope and this is who you, you've decided to date. It's not for me, but I don't feel like people who are doing it are doing it because they have no other options. And mm -hmm. if they are, they need to step back and re-examine what, what's going on inside them, that they feel that they have to do that. Perception mm. is so interesting because when I heard Lonnie's comment, what I thought was I've been banging my head against the wall trying to have this one type of fantasy and I didn't realize that there were other options available to me. And I finally realized that I can have happiness in many different ways and this is the way that I found it. Um, so I, I get what you're saying and I, and I definitely think a lot of women, because our fantasy is so much, and I think this is innate for most races, right? Like you like your brother, you like your dad, you, these are the first men you love, so you love men who look like them. Mm -hmm. um, you have to be open to it. But no, I don't think that uh, women who date outside of their race, specifically black women, are bitter, just like other women aren't bitter. Now, do I think there are bitter black women? Yes, yes and there are bitter black men. Mm. But that's not your story. No, no. It's just, again, it's just kind of how it ended up happening. I was in a very white place, and that's just what, what you know I ended up seeing. Um, and I, I agree. Like, I don't think you should date somebody outside of your race as a last resort or anybody as a last resort. That's insulting not only to you, but to that person. Like, how do you, you know, how do you stand up there in front of the world when you're getting married or whatever and say, you know, I chose you because nobody else chose me. That's, or I couldn't find a suitable black yeah, man. Yeah, right. yeah, that's awful. Mm. Well, and a lot of people are doing it. <laughs> but, but, but I do feel like the circumstance is such where people have to open and broaden their horizons. And it doesn't sound sexy to say I didn't intend to date a person who looked like this or was like this, but that is your reality. 
Mm. And we have to accept that. Well, here's another one. If you date a white man, it somehow diminishes your blackness or you might get your black card snatched. It depends on what type of white man you're dating. Okay, explain. So if you're dating a black... <laughs> you're ready to snatch all the cards. <laughs> She's like, I am the card. Listen, <laughs> if you're dating a white man that's an ally, that you can kind of bring places and they know what to say, what not to say. They know that certain things they should stay out of. They know that they just shouldn't comment on certain things, but they're comfortable. They feel like, you know, I may not have made the potato salad, but I contributed to the meal in some form or fashion, but I'm not trying to jump in on black jokes. I'm not trying to say things that's just like, yo, what is he doing? If you're dating that type of white man, I got to look at you crazy. Cause I'm just like, mm. how are you going to let him come in here and just say whatever he want out the side of his face and just, right. just feel too comfortable. Like we want him to feel comfortable because he's a he's he's your mate and your family, so he's family to us. Wait, are you but there's a line. You have to keep your white man in check. Is that what yes. you're saying? <laughs> you have to you, list of things that he needs to read. Listen, and it's just certain things that you know are you just don't say. Like if you say something and everybody gets quiet and kind of just is like if there's too many of those, I'm starting to look at you funny because I'm like, so in your household, he just be saying whatever. Mm. Do you keep your white men in check? Oh. Um, it keeps them tied up. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, for the ones that I bring around, like friends and family, they they know that. Like they, those are. That's why I'm able to bring them around friends and family because they know better. The ones that I'm just like using uh, for whatever reason. Uh, nobody sees them but me, so I don't have to, you know, deal with them outside of it. But I have had some, you know, I did date this one guy. I called him Casually Racist Charlie because he would say, um, <laughs> he would say little, you know, stuff like I was watching Star Trek, the original series one day, and he was like, oh, I didn't know black people like Star Trek. I'm like, it's Lieutenant Uhura right here. Why would we not watch this, you know? So things like that. Obviously, that didn't last long. It was like a two-month stand kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but... That stuff, I did not, I was like, no, I can't deal with that. I definitely have a limit. It's not like I'm just going to let somebody say any old thing to me. Um, mm -hmm. But I do recognize that white people are biased, period. They're just, they just have their own bias. And there's all, they're always going to be a little racist in some kind of way. And you're okay with that? <sighs> no, girl. We know <laughs> Out here making excuses I mean, for that. It's, it's, it's not necessarily that we, have, we should have the same standard of respect for ourselves and for how our partners should treat us regardless of race. Yeah. I think the challenge when you're dating outside of your race is that there's a difference between ignorance and microaggressions versus someone who's really internalized racism yeah. and the racial hierarchy. Yeah. And Figuring that out is yeah. the challenge when you're specifically bringing them around outsiders, like someone who's trying too hard to be cool yes. or intentionally disrespectful yes. or has just not been exposed. Yeah. And, and there's so many other burdens that go along with dating someone outside of your race, specifically someone who is part of the most powerful racial class, white men. Right. Mm. So it's not that I'm like going to forgive every single thing that a white man says to me that is, you know, racist or a little racist or biased in some way again i just kind of like i know you probably have not been exposed to this you know it's so a moment, it's a teachable it's moment but teach. exactly and oh, that's the like thing we don't have to teach our men different oh things. Yes. yes i just yes. think that they're a different burden so that's why the baseline has to really be do i believe that this person respects all of my yes. all yes. of my identities do they yes. respect me as a person as a woman and as a woman of color Yes. And once you have that baseline, then you can start judging the other things that they do in a different way. Because we have black men who don't do that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, here's another one. This one's kind of spicy. Ooh. There are differences in the bedroom. Yes. Fact or oh, fishy. Okay, I gotta finish yes. Well, how do you know? <laughs> so you've been dating? <laughs> I, have I, have friends, I have friends that come back You've and tell me the story. You've been wrong. <laughs> they tell me the story. I'm like, girl. <laughs> when they come back and tell me the stories, I'm like, girl. Apparently they weren't good stories. No. What kinds oh, of things are they? they well, so the, the stereotypes wrong. are that they. Oh. <laughs> Go ahead. No. I'm, I'm, what was your? I'm gonna. What was your? Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> there are differences in the bedroom. Fact or fiction? Fact. Okay. Explain. Elaborate. Um. <laughs> and it's not necessarily, I don't, I don't want to go there because it's not necessarily physical because I know that there is this idea about uh, endowment and, um, but I will say that I, you know, 
I will say that I'm special in that I have a certain kind of radar so I can tell what a guy is working with just from like a quick little look. So I'm You're very- You're gonna have to teach me that. <laughs> that's what the show. You need to a course kind of... online for sure. So like, I have a, like a, um, like about 93 percentile in being correct and wow. like being able to she judge. Has a high yeah, brand. like I, I, I know. So I don't mess with no Rudy Poos, regardless of Not race. Rudy Poo. So, um, but there are, there are some, <laughs> <laughs> there are um, some differences in like approach, style. Um, again, just this idea of what they're willing to engage in and what they're not willing to engage in and, and that kind of thing. That's your experience. Yeah. That that's more, more yeah. Open. Yes. In my experience, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um, and then also I will, I will say though, that everybody is obsessed with black penis, regardless mm -hmm. of who you are, because there have been times when even just on a first date, somebody has been like, so is it true what they say about black men? You know, mm. it's a white guy asking me. And I'm like, okay, well, if you just... white men want to know? Yes. And I'm like, if you want to know about a black dude's dick, just go find a black dude. Like, I'm not going to help you out with that. Like, why are you asking me? <laughs> yeah. Also, yeah. Also, also, be that all black men are not well endowed. No. Mm. You know, and it, it's, some, it's a burden that we actually put on them and an unrealistic expectation. Yes. We know the average penis size is about, what, four inches. And for all men or just black men? Well, no, that's yeah, it's, that's supposed to be on average. Now we don't know who in that statistic. I can't say what the ratio is of <laughs> right. races in it, but we're saying that that's who's the, closer to yeah, that's, who's closer to sex. that's the average. <laughs> so you know, it's it's a lot of pressure to put on our, our guys. But there are other stereotypes, like I think that you know the question speaks to too is in terms of like smell, like you're saying approach, mm. stroke. Mm. You know, and so I think that there are a lot of things that people are curious about mm. when it when it comes to that. So that's the question. I mean, I have enjoyed everyone that I have enjoyed. There okay. it is. Not, not set on that. There it is. Okay. All right. Moving on. <laughs> uh, white men treat you better than black men. I know you lie. Well, I think that also <laughs> triggered that triggered a lot of people too because people felt like Lonnie's tears were because she's being treated so amazingly like, so wrong. by a Here's white, white man. And I, you know, mm -hmm. I'm not married right now, but I have so many friends who are married. Most of my girlfriends are married and they're African American and they have amazing husbands. My brothers are husbands and they are amazing mm -hmm. men. And so I really hate that stereotype that black men don't know how to treat women. It's just mm. not true. No, it's not it's true. Not My true longest all. relationship was with a black man. So just because I'm dating white men doesn't mean I've never been treated well. That doesn't mean that I've never been happily in love with a black man because I have more than once. And so that, I don't believe that at all. Um, and for anyone who tries to, you know, steer me into saying that, I'm not going to do that because that's not the case at all. It just so happens. I date white guys and they serve me for whatever purpose that they serve me. And you know, if tomorrow I meet a black guy and he's amazing and he serves the needs that I have, I'm going to be with him until we're not together anymore. So I, I don't have a preference. I don't specifically go after just white men or just what, you know, whatever. It's again, just kind of how the circumstances end up falling and I think that's the problem that a lot of people don't understand that it's not necessarily the problem is when you are just like tunnel vision and you only pick one and you are leaving out all these other possibilities and I think if you just open you know just kind of look to the side for a little bit you will mm. see that there are other possibilities of people who can treat you well and be good to you and in the bedroom and outside of the bedroom whatever you need and I think that's just that's just the bottom line of that mm. okay well here's one more Black women get more backlash than black men for dating outside their race. Absolutely. Black women get more backlash for breathing. Yeah. Black, <laughs> black women get backlash yeah. just for existing. So yeah. that's yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, People want us to carry the burden of everything. They want us to carry the burden of the race. They want us to carry the burden of being women. They want us to carry the burden of just life in general. And so when they see that we are... I don't know, doing something outside of their expectations, suddenly we have failed. We are race traitors. We are traitors to our, our sisterhood, all this other kind of stuff. When it's just like the one time that we are thinking about ourselves, the one time that we decide, you know what, I'm going to let this white man do whatever to me. 
and be okay with that, then suddenly we have failed the whole world and we should be in jail someplace or whatever. And that's ridiculous. It's too much pressure yeah. to put on black women. Just let us be free and be like, have a good time for once. And then maybe we can come back and save everybody. But let's so give me a little chance to be, be myself. And then I'll, you know, I'll come back and save the world. The pursuit mm. of happiness is just not celebrated for black women, yeah. right? So mm. black women, we, we tell, we tell the story of struggle, right? Like Nas has Islam, they love to hear the story of how the thugs live in worry. Well, they love to hear the story of black women living in worry, doing the work and just toiling. And the fact that more women are saying, you know what? I have options for happiness. I don't have to deal with just this. Mm -hmm. You know, and then let's also think about the fact that there is some projection in that because we know that a lot of black men are dealing with issues of self-hatred when they pick outside their race. So they're projecting that onto black women. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, then, and last but not least, there's also the fact that there is this incarceration rate, the, fa the rate of fathers leaving home. So it's a failure that's just not felt by the specific black man. It's felt by black men, men as a whole. So when black women say, you know what, I want to look elsewhere, that's also a smack in the face and it can be hurtful. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, you have to do what makes you feel happy, healthy, and whole. You know, so as long as you are pursuing someone and you're in full self-love, you have to go for it. Mm. Well, I will say this, competition inspires excellence. Okay. And well, that. <laughs> I think real love is special and rare. So wherever people find it is just fine by me. Personally, I would never exclude black men from my dating pool, but I'm open to anyone who wants to love me. And I'll end it there. So I want to thank my guests, Tequila, Tia, and Nicole for joining us and sharing their unfiltered opinions. And as always, thank you for watching. And remember, you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Marley Show. See you next time.